The shortcomings of female representation in popular culture is nothing new. This discussion focuses specifically on a subset of this media, the portrayal of women in film traditionally produced by and aimed at young males, which are now enjoying broader engagement with female viewers as well. Essentially, how many women are present in media typically catering towards nerds? Can women see themselves in superhero roles and consume associated merchandise to the same extent the originally targeted young men can? First, how many women are actually present in these movies? The cast of characters is always male-dominated, as demonstrated by Amanda Shendruck, who analyzed gender representation through over 30,000 comic book characters. According to her, only 26.7% of all DC and Marvel characters are female, and only 12% of mainstream superhero comics have female protagonists. As a part of the same study, she looked at over 2,500 superhero teams and found that 30% of those teams had no women, compared to the 8% of teams with no men. The average superhero team is only 28% female. Even without a similarly detailed review, it seems things are even worse in the Star Wars universe, where they are evidently only allowed to have one central female character at a time. This discrepancy likely stems from the gender perception gap, a tendency where men think there are more women than there actually are. The Gina Davis Institute for Gender and Media found that women tend to make up approximately 17% of crowds in a crowd scene, but this is seen as equal. As Gina Davis herself told NPR, if there's 17% women, the men in the group think it's 50-50. And if there's 33% women, the men perceive that as there being more women in the room than men. It is also worth asking whether the simple absence alone can justify why women aren't often given lead roles in these films. For the longest time, it was believed that women couldn't lead their own superhero movies, mostly due to an expected rejection by the target young male audiences. There were some critical failures that lent credence to this theory, such as Catwoman and Elektra, but there were some terrible male superhero movies as well, such as Batman and Robin and Green Lantern, and no one ever believed that male-led superhero movies wouldn't sell. Wonder Woman has been around as a character for over 70 years, but she didn't get her own theatrical movie until two years ago. Marvel celebrated the 10-year anniversary of their cinematic universe before releasing their first female-led superhero movie, Captain Marvel. Despite the undisputed financial success of these female-led superhero movies, there was still a lot of backlash when these movies were released. An all-female viewing of Wonder Woman held in Texas caused a lot of controversy for supposedly being exclusionary and sexist. Oh, the irony. Before Captain Marvel was released, Rotten Tomatoes was spammed with negative reviews, causing an audience rating of 27% before anyone even saw the movie. There were also campaigns to boycott not only these movies, but also The Last Jedi and the reboot of Ghostbusters. That reboot received a lot of hate from the very start. When the first trailer was released, it was the most disliked video on YouTube. The comment section of that video is filled with internet trolls and sexist hate speech, which was also tweeted at the actresses, the director, and anyone attempting to even defend the film. The enroachment of female protagonists and audiences in a realm that was typically male-dominated has enticed some of the fan base to become active social media protesters, successfully keeping media executives afraid of changing the status quo for many years. The underrepresentation of women is reflected in the marketing for these properties as well. Not only are there more shirts, costumes, and merchandise for male characters, but there are more options for male consumers than female. There really is only one brand, Her Universe, which caters towards female merchandise buyers interested in Star Wars or comic book movies. All of my comic book t-shirts were either purchased online or in the men's section. Writer Emma Kidwell cross-checked across multiple websites for women's gaming apparel, including Bioware, PlayStation, and Bethesda, and consistently found that the men's section far outnumbered the women's section, with up to five times more options. This lack of options is particularly evident in toys. Toy sets tend to exclude the female characters. Despite Rey arguably being the main character of Star Wars The Force Awakens, she was still excluded from a lot of action figure toy sets and even the Monopoly set. They would apparently rather include generic TIE fighter pilots than the central female character. Avengers play sets don't include Black Widow, and Guardians of the Galaxy sets don't include Gamora. 
All of this has accumulated into the social media hashtags, hashtag where's Widow, hashtag where's Gamora, and hashtag where's Ray. But not enough change has resulted from that online activism. It's still unclear whether or not the choice to include only female characters in certain toy lines is deliberate or not, but it is still problematic either way. This level of exclusion doesn't only alienate girls. Erasing female protagonists sends a message to young boys too. Female characters aren't worth your time or recognition. So why is female representation so important in this particular medium? As Caroline Coca, author of Superwomen, Gender, Power, and Representation Rights, if the constantly repeated story is that women and girls are not leaders, are not working in professional settings, are not agents of their own lives, but merely adjuncts to others, and sometimes not even present at all, it can reinforce or foster societal undervaluing of women and girls. As the superhero movie and science fiction fantasy genres become more ingrained in popular culture, female audiences are only likely to grow and marketers and producers would be smart to rethink their gender considerations.